it's been on for about an hour and I haven't heard the relay uh, coils act up, so I think I'm good there. And uh, I retimed it. It was, uh, the, the whole thing was completely out of time, so uh, it seems to be running, uh, you know, pretty good. Are you on it right now? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm on the 7800. This is that mic that Dave, uh, or, uh, uh, yeah, uh, David sent me SM20 and, uh, and the, uh, the Henry. So is this microphone considered a Turner, uh, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Telex or something? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's an old military mic. They made those for years and years and years. Uh, I, I don't remember the model number on it, but it, that, that's what it is, though. Yeah, it's nice. I actually like it. It looks like somebody went inside and put a piece of a little silver shimmery cloth in it because it probably had some piece of cloth behind it that deteriorated. I just moved my pre-select. Uh, I think that probably jumped us up quite a bit. Oh yeah, yeah. Adjust the pre-select for maximum output power into the amp. Yeah. Oh, one two. It's being funny. Yeah, that was touchy. Oh, wow. That is very touchy. Yeah. At one point, you were thirty over. Yeah, I don't even know if I really even have it <laughs> right at the right spot, but um, I think it's good enough for the moment. Uh, the radio will just, it'll move, you know, it'll move real fast. It's not like a nasty drift. It's just you're going to have to correct the radio every 20 minutes at least, or maybe less than that. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you could use this to do all kinds of DX. They would never care because they don't care what your voice sounds like as long as they can copy you. Oh, yeah, and that and it's just fun. You know, just barefoot. Just go up on 20 meters. Uh, sit there and just call and call and call and call. You know? Uh, that, that's what I do once in a while. I, I haven't done it in a number of years, but I've got that little uh, swan signet. It's, uh, it's a one tube um, little swan. Yeah, it does like 100 watts, I think. Uh, it's, got, it's got 189.50 in it. I think it actually does about 150. But anyways, uh, yeah, I, I, it doesn't even have an S meter. I just I go up on 20 meters, and uh, uh, I get it tuned in through the beam. I face it into Europe, and I just call and call and call. And I end up, I end up working like 20 people on it, you know, just with a uh, pad of paper and a pen. And it's just, it's just fun. it's really fun, you know? Um, nobody's ever mentioned the fact that you're off frequency. I mean, I think maybe once or twice I had some jack, jack ball come in there. Uh, hey, did you know that you're off frequency? Like, get a life, old man. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that the one that has the tuning eye? Yeah. Oh, that's the cool one. I had the 270B with the meter instead of the tuning eye, and it has like a, a single 6-0 Q6. Is it actually, that radio did not drift. It was really, really stable, like a 101. Oh, yeah, I know. But that, that's what's ironic, is that that thing is very, very stable. Uh, that little signet on the 260 is just rock solid, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's been on for an hour, you're good. But, uh, yeah, but I, I just go up there and pick a frequency and then and, and, and call and call and call, you know. And, uh, you know, once there's like two or three people, I'd also go onto the cluster and I would spot myself. And so that helps, of course. And uh, uh, people would tune into me and, and try to work me. Um, but uh, yeah, did you know that you're off frequency on that radio? Uh, you tuned to me, old man. That's how this works. 
<laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter where I'm at <laughs> if I'm the one calling. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you should tell Dave we're on here. I, w I talked to him on the phone earlier. Uh, he was talking about getting on the Drake's. Oh, okay, cool. I, I didn't expect to jump on this thing this early, and, uh, and I know he'd get a kick out of hearing it. Yeah, I just I had I had a little bit of time to kill. She's not going to be home till like six, and uh, I thought, well, we'll jump in here because uh, uh, I don't know. The last night the band was just uh, it was locked up, man. I mean, those, those guys literally would not unkey for an hour and a half, and I know uh, uh, you know the, the band is gone by eight, and so I thought, well, let, let me see if you're around. So yeah, well, it'll come back around, uh, you know. 10 or 9 or you know somewhere around there usually it seems like I haven't ever seen it not come back <coughs> a better ID KG7 HR boy you should have heard these guys I was listening to them earlier they were nuts they keyed up on top of everybody that was talking to run their call signs because they were afraid they didn't ID within 10 minutes they're that serious You, you hear what I was saying, how these guys were talking? Uh, they were having a conversation, and all the rest of them in the group uh, just keyed up on top of those guys, uh, one after another, giving their call sign on the 40 or whatever they say on the 30, because they were so afraid that they were like past their 10 minute. Really? I'd never seen anything quite like it. I was like, did I really just see that? They really just trampled over the current conversation to ID, or they just don't like those guys? We got an ID timer. Someone told me a couple weeks ago, you, you should get an ID timer on your phone or computer to let you know, like to blow it on your app. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one thing if you just do not give your ID, you know what I mean? And like, you know, uh, or, you know, you're, you're doing something bad and you don't want to give your ID or, you know, whatever. But like, if you're just having a conversation and, you know, I mean, it shouldn't even really be a 10 minute requirement if somebody wants to know who we are they just can jump in and say hey this is a k k something whoever uh um how you doing you know or whatever you know join the conversation you know ask who we are you know and then instead of complaining about it yeah i know i just worry i, I, I want to worry less about what other people are doing in my life you know, just whatever. He, he, he can't. He can't help it, man. You know, just what it is. What it is. Oh well, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. People are always going to get upset about certain things, and like, you know, a lot of people just get upset if everybody isn't exactly all the same. It's like I don't understand it, and especially from people that are involved in ham radio are usually kind of eccentric to start with. Yeah, I told him, who, who, who nominated you a band cop, huh? And, and what and what good uh, or betterment for the world is it going to result in? You're not the band gatekeeper. Get out of here. That's my new one, actually, the gatekeeper. You're, you're, you're not the gatekeeper. Get out of here. I'm Gozer. I'm looking for the gatekeeper. Remember the Ghostbusters? Yeah, I know. What, 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 what do you think? You're the gatekeeper? Who nominated you? Get out of here. Or what about the guy that, that jumped in there the one night about being wide? Oh, uh, well, I mean, you know, it's a legitimate question, but I told him. Because he, he said, yeah, I was complaining. He was complaining about uh, uh, AMers and uh, being wide, and I thought, yeah, you know what? What? what a, I'm sorry. I, I really am. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to be. You know, I, I'm not trying to be mean to anybody. But what a jackball! You know, he's he's complaining about AMers being wide, and you know, you heard me. I, I handled it. They only have like one or two frequencies, man. Leave those guys alone. Go somewhere else. Get a life. Well, I mean, if you understand and you passed your test, you know how different modes work. I don't hear anybody complaining about these FM guys being 15 wide. I'll be like, oh, dude, you need to be on narrow FM up here, you know, or anything like that. 
I did actually, I got an email from a guy because we were talking about it one night and he said, uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but FM is not legal anywhere, uh, blah, blah, blah. And so I, it is. It's absolutely legal on HF. Yeah, below, anywhere you want, as long as you stay within a certain deviation and it's right in the FCC part 97 and I, you know, just referred to him an old thread on QRZ where they were arguing about it, never heard a word back. But he actually like went up the, the trouble to uh, look me up and email me. And um, you know, the thing is, you're, you're allowed to use FM. You can, you just have to be, uh, I don't know what it's, there's like, you know, they don't want you to be any wider than an AM signal. But I mean, if you, your AM, you have two sidebands in a carrier. You can't do narrow band AM really. I mean, you know, you're not gonna be able to do three kilohertz. I mean, and why should you have to? Well, normal is six kilohertz, yeah. Um, I know, yeah, yeah, I know it's ridiculous, but the, that particular guy, though, he was complaining about AMers being wide, and, you know, I just thought, what, 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 what a what a jackball. I mean, you know, because, you know, any AM station that you're going to hear is going to be two sidebands, um, you know, and, and, and many of those guys run uh, 10K, 10K wide, 9 or 10 and uh, both side bands, you know, full fidelity. And uh, um, yeah, I just I just thought it was weird. It struck, it struck a chord with me, because I thought, you know what I mean, Here, here's a guy that's complaining about two or three frequencies. So like on the 160 meters ramp, there's only one. There's only one frequency, 1885. On this band, it's 3870, 3880, and 85, that's it. There's occasionally some guys down at 3725, uh, but then, you know, that's pretty much it. On 40 meters, there's only one frequency, 7293. That's it. No, nobody's anywhere else. On 20 meters, it's 14286 or 14330, but rarely on 330 now. It's only the one frequency. That's it. Then on, uh, you know, 15 meters, same thing. It's one frequency. 10 meters, it's 29 megahertz. 29010 to 040. That's it. No, they, they don't operate anywhere else. I mean, you know, can you imagine sitting around complaining about somebody operating one frequency on the entire band? Oh, yeah. Like, complain about them operating on 10 meters, especially because there is all that empty space in between where there isn't anybody. And it's kind of funny. But, yeah, I, I, I don't understand. It's like, do people get to the point where they think they, like, own the frequencies and things and they're like, how dare these guys operate here where we hold our net or hey you know why are these guys here you know and but the other person isn't willing to move or do anything so it's like you're already unreasonable anyway anything other than changing the band? It's got 16 presets. Um, it's got eight built into the unit, plus manual. Then the manual band switched to the load that has eight presets. And then there's a, an additional eight on an external unit. And they, uh, they have little miniature tuning loads. So basically, uh, all you gotta do is, uh, once you set those, uh, that's it, you just, you know, go, go to preset one through eight. One would be 10 meters, that's the way I set it up. Um, you know, 28, 500, and two is uh, 15, you know, and uh, three is 20, a couple, couple frequencies on 20, so I don't have to retune it, you know. So one that's kind of low, one kind of high. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's the same thing with 40. Uh, so yeah, you just, uh, I got a chart here with a magnet on the front of it. So you, you know that like uh, uh, H 
is uh, 160 meters. G is uh, 3933. You know, and, and so forth. You know, I got 3853 in here. Um, so yeah, you just you just hit the button, and all the motors take off. Oh geez. Okay. So what year did that amp come out? Ninety-seven to two thousand six. Two thousand seven. Uh, and this is a, a later one, 2006. Is that kind of like one of those ARD amplifiers? You know the one I'm talking about, the big gigantic computer controlled thing? Um, I can send you a picture of this thing. This is a two-piece amplifier, so the amplifier and the power supply, they're in a, just a giant box. That box can be wherever. It could be in, in the, it's supposed to be in the other room, so you don't have to hear it. There's no controls on it, it's just a box. And then uh, the control unit sits next to your radio on your desk. And the control unit has a uh, watt meter, forward reflect, plate current, plate voltage, band switch, preset select, low and high power, uh, you know, all, all of that on the control unit. So you can turn the thing on and off. So it's, it's designed for this to be in another room so you don't have to hear it. Well, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that it was that new, but so um, they were probably very expensive, weren't they? Oh yeah. So what tube does that use? A 3CX3000. So they probably didn't sell very many of those, did they? They, they did. They sold them to military. Uh, I think they sold four or five hundred of them. But they sold them to military. These were never sold to hams uh, because they, they were they weren't type accepted. Uh, but the way they got around that is uh, they made an identical model to this, but it was called a 3K, and it had one of those 1200 tubes in it. Very similar. You, you can't tell from the outside. It's just different, different transformers, different tube. And those were type, type accepted. And so, like, if you knew the woman that run, ran Henry or Ted Henry or, you know, uh, you, you purchased stuff from them before, well, you could call up and say, I want one of those 8Ks. And uh, they'd sell you one. But it would just say 3K on it. And the, the receipt would say 3K and, and all that. And the manual says 3K slash 8K. So that, that, that's kind of kind of the way they did it. If, if it says 8K, then it, it was sold to the military or sold to some kind of, you know, for, for some kind of government uh, thing. Or uh, I was talking to uh, a guy that, that sold these, uh, my, my, my friend, and he told me that uh, he shipped a ton of these to Saudi Arabia, to hams, because they, they, they don't have uh, FCC out there. So they, they, they could run 20, 30,000 watts, doesn't matter. Uh, as hams, they just do what they want. So he said, uh, back in those years, I used to I used to uh, order those and ship them, uh, sell them, and ship them to Saudi Arabia like crazy. Yeah, I, I've I've heard about that, and I've heard of like a lot of other places in Europe that aren't really even any limitations, really, not even legally. Yeah, yeah, they don't they don't have any. I know one one particular guy over there has 45,000 watts on HF. I, I know because I've seen the video and I know the guy and I know the guy that built the amplifier. Uh, but it's a it's a, a massive two-piece amplifier. I mean, I don't know. It's got to be a thousand pounds, you know. And uh, yeah, 40 45,000 watts on sideband on uh, HF. Yeah, the guy, uh, the guy paid him fifty thousand bucks for it. He built it and then uh, shipped it over there. They, uh, he actually took it over to the airport, and they they showed up and with a cargo plane and yeah, flew it directly over there to the guy. And then actually he went there because they, they were having problems with it for some reason. So they uh, they, they sent him a uh, a business jet. He he flew all the way back over there and fixed it and set up everything and helped, you know, adjusted the antennas and everything, got it running, and uh, and then they flew them home. That's pretty crazy, KG7HVR. This microphone seems to be kind of directional. 
Just the noise canceling. Nothing's made in the in the time where uh, you were going down the road in a semi truck with the windows down with a Cummins big cam or or two stroke uh, GM diesel uh, wailing away and you had you had to talk on the radio and so those things are extremely noise canceling. You have to be right up on them. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, wow. I gotta get another shelf in here set up and then I can actually can get a couple of other things out of my way. I need to get like a couple of sheets of, uh, if I could, I could do two things, I either a sheet of um, a three quarter plywood or something like that, a half inch or whatever the hell, or uh, laminate a sheet of OSB so it looks nice. that white laminated countertop at the home center. That's what I've used in the past to make shelves and stuff. It's just white for mica. Uh, you can buy a uh, sheet of that stuff, cut it yourself. What do they usually charge for a sheet of it? I have no clue. I don't remember, man. But they have it over there, you know, in the, the edge on the one side and, and the sides are finished. Um, so, you know, it, it's meant for you to be making uh, a countertop, um, and and so you, you know you, you can cut it. You gotta be careful cutting it. You know you have to watch some YouTube videos. You have to score it, and then and then of course use a saw. I, I think. Um, but uh, you know if you just take a rip saw to it, you probably break all the the mic off of it. But um, the, the, the that's uh, you, you can get that, or you, or you can get one that's uh, it, it's similar. It's, it's, it's basically it's a particle board with a white co white uh, uh, coating on it, and it, it's not it's not thick like a countertop. I, I don't know. I start to explain. You have to go out there and look at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, that stuff. I've cut it before, and if you cut it with a certain direction. Um, I because the, the blade I think spins up, so I think you put the pretty side down, and, and then you won't uh, destroy that uh, finish on the other side. Yeah. I've got this table that came out of a restaurant. I picked it up in Scottsdale. It was over by the Goodwill, leaning up against the dumpster. Big, huge formica table with you know real nice wood edges and everything and there was two other goofy shaped tables and I grabbed them both and I cut one of them up and then one of them I got out here for my workbench is really really heavy um, that's like the same kind of stuff but uh, yeah I know they, they, they do sell the shelving and stuff like that but I need I just need to put one more thing in here and then I'm to figure out like how to suspend it and then I need uh, to make more room underneath so like I can actually have things set up. I, I want to be able to get on the, the 710 and like have like the easy operating station for where like if I really wanted to sit and chase DX all day I could do that. So things working pretty good. Has it really drifted that much? So, of course, I'm running it into the amplifier, but yeah. So there you guys go.